If you create a shape without a specific size, it'll automatically expand to fill all the available space. For example, I could draw a circle in my body here and stroke it in blue with a line width of 40. Now, take a close look at the left and right edges of our circle here. Do you notice how they're cut off? The border should extend all the way off the screen like this. What you're seeing here is a side effect of the way SwiftUI draws borders. If you had it so on a pencil outline of a circle and said, okay, uh, draw over this circle with a really thick pen. What they'd do is they'd push the pen down and they'd, well, they wouldn't like this for a start, neatly and gracefully. They'd, they'd, they'd draw it, they'd follow the circular line of the pencil, follow it exactly. And it'd mean that half their pen would be outside the pencil and half the pen would be inside the pencil. This is what SwiftUI is doing for us. But it means when our shapes go to the very edge of the screen, it means part of the border ends up outside the screen. We're clipping the edges of our shape. Now try using this instead. Stroke border blue line width 40. Now all our border is visible because SwiftUI strokes the inside of the border rather than centering on the line of the border itself. Now previously, we built this arc shape right here. And it's a shape, so just like circle, it'll automatically expand to take up all available space unless told otherwise. So we could say, I want to have a uh, arc with a start angle of degrees minus 90 and end angle will do degrees plus 90 and clockwise true. We'll get an arc like that. I'll then do a stroke border of blue, line width of 40. And if you open up the error message here, you're gonna see it's telling us very loudly, value of arc has no member stroke border, which means the arc shape has no modifier called stroke border. It doesn't know what stroke border even means here. This happens because there's a small but important difference between circle and arc. Both conform to the shape protocol. But circle also conforms to a second protocol called insettable shape. This is a shape that can be inset, i.e. reduced inwards somehow by a certain amount to produce a different shape. Now the inset shape it produces is anything. Realistically, you could make a, a circle into a square, a square into a triangle or a, a star, it doesn't really matter. But realistically, it's always the same shape, just slightly smaller. Like an inset rectangle is a smaller rectangle. Inset circle, a smaller circle. To make arc conform to the insettable shape protocol and therefore get stroke border, we've got to add one extra method to it, which is called inset by. This will be given some amount, which is half the line width we're drawing. Remember, the outside is but the bit we want to pull in, so half line width, inside by that amount, we'll pull it all in so it all lies inside the stroke. Uh, and this has to return a slightly smaller arc. Bring it in. The problem is, we don't know how big the arc's going to be. Our path in method has not been called yet. It turns out the solution is actually fairly simple. If we give our arc shape a new inset amount property, default into zero, we can just add to that whenever inset by is called. Adding and adding and adding. And adding to the inset allows us to call inset by again and again and again, each time making the arc smaller. And then we can call stroke border to get a finished smaller arc. First things first, add a new variable property to the arc, var inset amount is 0, 0.0. And now give it an inset by uh, method here. Now what we're gonna do is, we're gonna make this the pretty much almost the only time in this course we've gotta use a CG float, which is a archaic version of double that somehow wormed its way into SwiftUI. And it actually exists in many, many places, but mostly, in fact almost entirely, Swift lets us use doubles everywhere CG floats needed. Not here. We've got to say func inset by an amount of a CG float. It's a double with a different name. That's all it is. Returns some insettable shape. We'll get a, a new variable called arc, which is a copy of ourself. 
our start angle, our end angle, our clockwise, our inset amount. We then modify the arc's inset amount and add to it whatever amount we've been asked to inset by. And then return that arc. Now this amount here should be applied to all edges. So rectangles don't get smaller by staying fixed on one side and shrinking like this. They should shrink equally on both sides down to the middle like this. And so in this case, we're drawing an arc. The best place to do this is actually our radius. You know, the amount of space we have is the same, but we're entering by again and again and again, getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So we're going to modify this radius to be rect.width divided by 2 minus our inset amount. So it gets smaller along the way. And now we can say that our arc conforms to insetable shape. And in doing so, our code will now compile and our stroke border modifier will now actually also work. So when this redraws, hopefully in a moment, uh, come on preview, you can do it. <laughs> All being well, it will actually uh, work. In the meantime, while it's having a little think about its crimes, thank you for that, I will just point out, oh, there we go, I'll point out that insetable shape actually builds upon shape. It inherits from the shape protocol. And so you don't conform to shape and insetable shape, just insetable shape gets you both. Anyway, stroke border is now working correctly. We've stroked our arc inside the border, so the entire thing fits onto the screen.